Hi guys, we will discuss today obesity in anesthesia. It is an increasing problem around the world and especially in anesthetic patient or patient who will give uh, anesthesia. How do we calculate if patient is obese or not? We do have formula for body mass index called and we see by rows uh, any of the indices and what it represents. So kilogram dividing by meter of square, it is a weight and height dividing one by another. And as a result, we can see which which category from which category is patient. If the index is 20, patient is of normal weight. If if it have 30 or more, it is considered obese or more than 40 even. Uh, obese morbidity. Is it important for anesthesia? Of course, as in patients with obesity occur a lot of physiological changes and they uh, take place in a different system or organs. Let's start with every one of this. So airway, the main point is they have difficult phase ventilation and ventilate and difficult intubation. For example, a patient which is obese have a, a huge face with short neck and extension extension is very difficult. The second one is the respiratory system that suffer also as patient have increased oxygen consumption and uh, carbon dioxide production. So it will lead to chronic hypercarbia. Also, patients have decreased chest uh, compliance just because of increased adipose tissue in the front of the abdomen, which, which uh, pushes and create, which create an abdominal, abdominal pressure and pushes the diaphragm. Also, it, it uh, it decreases uh, res uh, inspiratory reserve volume or uh, force the residual capacity. Especially uh, this one will be critical when patient changing position from uh, standing to the supine and all of this abdomen content will go down and to the diaphragm. So it will com compress also uh, respiratory uh, pulmons and will create difficulty in uh, respiration and of course overwork of the pulmons. As well, patients have obesity, hypoventilation syndrome, obstructive sleep apnea and pulmonary hypertension. As patients have hypoxia, patients have hypoxia, so low oxygen, from hypoventilation, it will lead to hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Pulmonary vasoconstriction will lead to decreased exchange of gases. So once again, low oxygen uh, content, low uh, and will lead to hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. It is a pathological cycle that occur as a result of hypoxia and hypercapnia. Cardiovascular system, a uh, patient is on increasing risk of uh, ischemic heart disease, arrhythmias, hypertension, and uh, hyperlipidemia. On a metabolic uh, part, it, patient uh, are on risk of uh, metabolic syndrome and, of course, diabetes mellitus. On GI tract, it is increased incidence of uh, hiatus hernia, gastroesophageal reflux, fatty liver uh, disease and cirrhosis. Also decreased empty uh, rate of stomach, stomach empty. From hematology, higher incidence of venous thromboembolism. How does it affect uh, pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic of the drugs? So remember, it, there is altered volume of distribution, elimination of the drug. For example, uh, main important is halosan have increased reductive hepatic metabolism and 
so you are giving a little bit more doses and will uh, you can affect and uh, and create a condition for fulminant hepa hepatitis, hepatitis from halosan cyopental or cyopenton have increased volume of distribution and it is going to the uh, body fat as morphine and they are eliminating lately from adipose tissue to the blood and adipose drug is deposited to the adipose tissue and after it is coming slowly back and prolong the effect of the morphine of or Cyopentone. How about uh, anesthetic consideration for an obese patient uh, presenting for the surgery? So, first important point is to make a preoperative assessment. Well, to prepare patient for for this anesthesia, and to ensure sufficient uh, time that is allocated for patient on the operating list. So assess um, assess well patient uh, clinically and paraclinically or la laboratory assessment. So any comorbidities like hypertension, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and uh, any of the previous conditions like uh, thrombosis or anything else. Anesthetic um, history with previous difficulties in intubation. If patient already had uh, any of the any of the anesthesia, and from history you can take uh, you can see that this patient uh, was in trouble with intubation. Opt optimize patient for surgery and ensure a senior anesthetist is available uh, to be uh, right in that moment and help you. So. Which analysis uh, do we need for patient with this uh, comorbidity or with obesity? You need, of course, a uh, cardiovascular assessment like EKG or ECHO, uh, laboratory tests like glucose and uh, uh, cholesterol, and of course, um, liver function test. How do you make do you make uh, induction and maintenance of the anesthesia? So you are choosing drugs as are for short duration of action. You are making premedication with antacid prophylaxis or a proton pump inhibitor. You can give also antiemetics like metoclopramide and uh, anticipate a difficult uh, intravenous access to use ultrasound if necessary or even a video laryngoscopy also you can make induction with uh, awake intubation by spraying lidocaine or any of the local anesthetic that will help you to make intubation as patient is is awake and can follow your commands like opening uh, mouth or take a deep breath which uh, favor intubation Maintenance uh, is made with short-acting anesthetic agents like uh, propofol and uh, opioids like remifentanil. Also, you can use inhalatory anesthetics like desfluren or sevoflurane. So, monitor well patient, especially maintain the temperature and in, in, ensure adequate fluid input. For post-operative management, uh, extubate awake and sitting sitting up uh, position patient, and of course prescribe a supplementar of oxygen through the nasal cannula or uh, mask or facial mask oxygen. Thank you very much and have a great time.